I'm gonna be a nice little cup of coffee. And it folds back inside, goes right over top. Hello, welcome to Waypoint Survival. A few weeks ago, Blackie Thomas challenged me to a haversack loadout. I've got mine put together. Stay tuned, we're gonna get to that right now. Carrying a haversack goes back hundreds, if not thousands of years. As long as we're aware of, mankind has always had the need to carry extra supplies. And so you will often see drawings and paintings and sketches, and in more recent time, photographs of some sort of a bag with a strap worn in a cross body fashion across the shoulder and neck. And these would carry all sorts of items. More recent history would be used to carry your rations, your food, and of course anything else that you might think that you would need. This would also be coupled with some sort of a possibles pouch where you would carry extra fire making material, things of that sort, things that you might possibly need and hence the name. In more modern times, we carry a haversack for day hikes, for woods wandering, for just throw in the back of the vehicle and if you get to a place and you want to take a little walk and check out something, if you would get turned around or lost, you would have some items in there. If you need to spend the night, it would make it a lot more comfortable. The first thing you're going to need if you're going to carry a haversack is of course the haversack itself. I made this quite a few years ago, I think somewhere about 2008, 2009, and it's simply a pair of pants, and I cut one leg off, it was a pair of lined, it's got flannel lining inside, I'll show you that when I open it up, but it's just duck cotton canvas, it was a pair of work pants, insulated work pants, and then I just hand stitched a couple of cotton belts around it. As you can see, it carries very well, and I prefer to carry mine slung around to the back like this, more into the small of my back. I just find that makes it a lot more comfortable. It's not swinging around from side to side and hitting brush and sticks as I'm going through trees. So I find this to be a good side to carry it. Normally carry it across this way to my left side. And again, it's very easy and it doesn't take up a whole lot of space. Opening up the haversack is quite simple. And I do prefer the kind that has a closure on it, just because it keeps everything together and I don't have to worry about something falling out if I knock the bag askew when I'm going through the woods. I was going to use Blackie Thomas's haversack that he gave me, and it's a really great haversack, but um, I opted for this one. It has just a little bit more room, and uh, I also, like I said, the fact that I can fasten this down. I'm going to show you this here in a little bit. Uh, this is a cooking arrangement that I came up with. And what it's held in is a pocket from a leather shirt. And I bought an old leather shirt at the Salvation Army and I just cut carefully around the pocket and the stitching. And it makes a really handy pouch. So that's kind of a neat trick for you if you're looking for something. Along with that, I have the other pocket. And I think, you, again, you'll really like what's in here. And uh, I'll show you that in a little bit. Really close to hand where we can access it is a military rain poncho. These are pretty good size, most of you are familiar with it, and it does need to be kept to the top, and this is so I can hang out in the rain if I need to, and if I am caught out in a sudden cloudburst, it goes over top of me and my gear. Most of you are familiar with poncho, doesn't need any more explanation. Next item that we have is a stainless steel water bottle. Very handy so you can boil your water on the trail. I also have this really handy Grand Trunk stool and I will be putting that up here in just a few minutes so you can see what that looks like. Our next large item is our Possibles kit and this has just a ton of items to make life a whole lot easier and I'll be opening that and showing those items. Next we have a balaclava made by Under Armour, compass wrapped up inside. I find that sometimes just keeping that extra heat in the head makes a huge difference and this is super lightweight and small very, very easy to put on and helps you retain your body heat a lot better if it would get cold and especially if it's windy. I'm packing some beef jerky for a quick snack. Don't really need a lot of food, but it's nice to have something to munch on. I also have an absolutely massive bandana. And this thing is 42 by 42 inches wide. As you can see, it's really big. We can use this for signaling, you can actually use it as an extra layer. You could put it over top of you, help hold in a little bit more body heat. Um, 
all kinds of stuff you can do with this much cotton besides making charred cloth and things like that but these are super awesome 100% cotton bandanas and uh, really beats those little bitty ones when you uh, really need to get the job done. The last item that we have is our fire kit. It's just a leather pouch with a deer antler toggle. And I'll go ahead and show you what's in here. It's not very complicated. First of all, we have ferro rod and striker some duct tape, and this is fire cord, so we have two means of kindling a fire already attached. I have four decent sized pieces of fat wood, and a small silky pocket boy. This is the 130. This little stool is super handy, and one of the hard things when you're out in the woods is finding a place to sit that you won't get all wet. And this is, I've had this for years, this is super handy. I like, it's got its own little bag and it holds quite a bit of weight. It's super compact, it's got a little bit of Velcro that holds it together. It's very well thought out. There you go, max load of 250 pounds. And uh, believe me, I have put it to the test. So there we have it put together and it's even designated AA and BB this side facing out so it just really helps you get it all figured out and it has a nice little pouch here under the bottom where you can store things like you're cooking or you just want to keep stuff off the ground so here it is it is really small and super lightweight but it holds me just fine and it's just great for resting and relaxing around a fire nice dry place to sit and it doesn't take up that much space to carry now let's get into the contents of the possibles bag first thing you see at top we have some brightly orange colored paracord along with bank line a couple of hanks of this this is for visibility if i want to spread the poncho out into an a-frame or some sort of a tarp configuration keep the rain off of me this keeps me from tripping over the guy lines i also carry a headlamp in this tic tac bottle most of you have seen this fare before, extra batteries. This is the Petzl Zipka. This goes on the back of the head. It's very easy, takes three AAA batteries, simple on and off switch, and it weighs very little. What I like about this light is it gets 140 hours on three AAA batteries. So again, lots and lots of light. Our next item is a first aid kit in a metal Band-Aids tin. At the top, we have some Tums, in case you have indigestion. We have several Band-Aid Tough Strips, the waterproof type. A pair of fingernail clippers, not only for hygiene, but also if you get a splinter or you have a little bit of, of loose tissue, or hangnail or something like that, this can really be handy. A toothpick and dental floss. It's not exactly medical, but if you have something stuck between your teeth, it can drive you crazy, especially when you're carrying beef jerky for your snack. In this old Bayer aspirin, I have some regular aspirin in case someone has an issue with heart problems. Also some Tylenol and some ibuprofen, which of course can be taken together if you have a sort of a, a pain injury. We also have some chapstick for chafing. Next, we have some all-important Benadryl. If you're around anyone that gets stung by a lot of bees or hornets or something like that, this can literally save their life. And the last item, just a couple of alcohol prep pads folded together. This is not a serious kit, this is a boo-boo kit. And as Blackie said in his video, anything more than this, you need to go to the doctor. For personal hygiene, we have some of this paper soap. These are little leaves of soap that you take out and you mix it with water. You can wash up. It's especially important if you get a wound that you need to clean off. This is a good thing to carry. I have an old snus tin. I cleaned all the paint and everything off of it, kind of give it that vintage look. And I just have some Strike Anywhere matches. This is waterproof. There's a seal that goes all the way around inside. And so that's going to be a super big help if I can't get something started with the ferro rod or just as a backup fire starting item. If I can't get a fire started, I have a couple of these hand warmers that are good for 10 hours. This is so you can just cuddle up under a tree and you can put this in the small of your back or inside your shoes or wherever if your feet get cold. 
very useful item. This next item is something you hope you never need when you're out in the woods, but it's better be prepared. It's just a small roll of toilet paper. Again, handy for anything from blowing your nose to taking care of more serious issues. Have some shop towel tissues for general cleanup, as well as a folding spoon. Opens up, slides forward, very lightweight. It's an Optimus Titanium. Also a bit of heavy-duty black waxed cord with a couple of needles for doing emergency repairs on the gear if the haversack would break or something would happen with one of the straps. The last item that we have is a small backup blade. This is made by Condor. It's the Otzi. I've done some customizing to the handle, blacken it, and uh, a little bit of coloring on the blade. See that? Also did a little modification to the sheath, made these slots bigger so that I can actually put it on my belt. You're not going to do a lot of major work with it, but of course this is something that you would uh, be able to do fine carving work and it's a great backup for processing small things, cutting notches and stuff like that. I always carry a sharpener in my pocket so I don't really have to carry one in this kit. So let's get to these little pouches here. I'm sure you're probably curious what they are. The first thing is not that unusual, just an esbit with some fuel inside. Most of you are familiar with this, super lightweight cooking stove. It has different positions. This is fully open for a larger pot, or you can angle it like, like this for a smaller cup. And this is the type of fuel that it uses. And these have been around since the Second World War. Very easy to use, lights really well. But you can also use these for a twig fire to make a twig stove. But the problem is if you have something that's small and doesn't fit on there, you lose a lot of room. So I was at the Salvation Army thrift store and I bought a baking rack, just a cooling rack like lays on your counter. And I took my snips and I cut off just a small section, goes right over top, the two bars on the side keep it from sliding off, and the tabs on the end here keep it from sliding that way. It's nice and secure and you've got enough room to feed your twigs in along with the airflow at the bottom. That's all well and good by itself, but there's something else that's in here in this next pocket that will really make this make sense. It is a complete coffee percolator, glass top, open it up, again just like the big ones, but enough for a small cup of coffee. Along with that, in an old Kodak aluminum can. I have enough coffee for two pots. So I can stop and have a hot drink whenever I feel like it. And to drink it, I have this early 1900s collapsible cup. Opens up like this. The handle's on a hinge. Holds out like this. And now we can have our hot coffee. Now we could use the spoon if we wanted, but we can also just easily pour it. I know about how much this takes in the little basket here. All right, that's about half. You can see what's left in there. Now we add our coffee. Get ready to do some percolating. All right, we've got our Esbit cube lit. I'm gonna go ahead and put on the little grate, and then I'm going to move it over to the fire pit and get it off of this cloth here. And not to waste any of our heat energy, let's go ahead and get it percolating. And there it is percolating. Boy, it smells good. Gonna be a great little cup of coffee. Well, it's done, and we're ready to take it off of a little fire here and pour us a nice cup of coffee. Perfect cup for the little pot.
Good way to make a quick cup of coffee. If you like coffee, you know how that can hit the spot. Super cool little cup too. When you're done with the cup, handle folds back inside, collapses down, lid goes on it. Very compact, easy to carry. Here's what it looks like, all laid out. And here it is, all packed back together and ready to hit the trail again. Doesn't weigh much, maybe five or six pounds. Of course, it'll weigh a little bit more depending on how much water you carry. Thank you all so much for watching, and as part of this challenge, I'm supposed to call out someone else. And I would like to call on Sarge Vining. I've mentioned him before in other videos. He's a wealth of information. I know he's done Haversack and Musette videos, but I would really like to see, as it was suggested by one of my viewers, they would like to see Sergeant Vining put together a modern type kit, what he would use if he were going to go woods walking today for an emergency or an overnight stay, something like that. This is James Bender for Waypoint Survival. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Also make sure and check out the links in the description box below, just under the more button. While you're down there, you'll also find our waypointsurvival.com link. And this is where you can sign up to take survival and bushcraft classes at our beautiful training facility in Southern Ohio. And if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to the channel. We'd really appreciate it. And when you do subscribe, make sure and press that bell button so that you can stay notified of all of our upcoming videos and we'll talk to you next time.